Hey guys, what is up? It's time for Kim and the Crease podcast number. Oh god, I forgot what number it is. <laughs> one twenty-seven. I can count. I am blonde. Uh, so guys, one twenty-seven right now. We are gonna talk Islanders hockey. We're gonna get into it. Oh my god, you see the box of cheese that's behind me? Hold on. Shh. I didn't snack before the stream. I swear. <laughs> but guys. Good to see you guys. Money, Ryan, David, Jordan. Good to see you guys. Um, We got a special guest with us today. I'm hiding her. Oh, okay. So it's a her. I'm hiding her backstage. Addie, I swear to God, if you say anything, I will kick your ass. (laughs) But I am hiding this lovely person backstage. I'm cheating on Snapple. Oh, my God. But yes, I am hiding a special guest backstage. She is very, very special in my life. Um, if you guys know who I'm talking about, you'll see I talk with her uh, about her on Twitter. You'll see I've talked about her on streams before. Um, this person to me, I call her my sister. She is my best friend in the universe and she has hockey knowledge up the butt. And this is why I invited her on here because she is kick ass and she knows all about her hockey. So if we want a Western point of view, she's your girl. And her name is Della. Surprise! <laughs> We're bringing on Sarah Lurie. Is it okay to say your last name or no? Go for it. I don't care. Sarah Worldson. Hello. Sarah the podcast. And best Avs fan over here. Just want to point that out. And biggest Thanks. Tyson Berry fan. <laughs> He's my boo. Always will love him. Always. I love him. The best and biggest Tyson Berry fan. And he is the. she made me a Tyson Berry fan, by the way. Yeah. I tend to do that to people. <laughs> But yes, we got ta- my best friend Taylor Worldson, future maid of honor, on the podcast tonight. <laughs> but oh, yes. she's gonna be giving us insight on everything Avalanche, the Western. I've like hopefully you can give us a little insight on the Western point of view, yeah. what you guys are thinking going into playoffs. And for my Islanders fans in here, because this is also an Islanders podcast, Zach Parisi, who you fucking stole from us. Hey, here's the thing. As a diehard Avs fan, I was not a Precy fan. I know you love him, but I was like, oh, when they signed him because it just felt icky. Because <laughs> I just, because uh, he was on the wild for so long and he would torture the Avs for so long. And I was like, this just, ugh. But within like a game, I was like, oh, I love him. <laughs> I love him. All is forgiven. That's all it takes and that that's what i call a character player jg pajot character mm-hmm. player zach parisi character player it takes one game for you to fall in love with them and their character uh, yep. that, that's what happened with us and jg pajot game one was against the rangers did a suicide pass to michael dow cole what does this five foot eleven no five foot nine man do he goes up and fights the guy like straight up I an islander that. fighting a ranger protecting his teammates Oh, everyone was like, JG, pass your <laughs> That game was nuts. I remember that. What that was probably one of the we... first Islanders games I'd ever watched. Oh, honestly. really? Yeah, oh probably God. like just pure Islanders. Yeah, it was probably the first one I'd watched, honestly. What would you say made you fall in love with Zach Parisi game one? Um, He is, he's a try-hard guy, and I really like that. Because, like, we have Cogliano, who at the deadline 2022, I was traded for him, and I was like, Okay, this is very typical of the Avs to trade for a guy like this. Um, they he's not a big offensive guy, but he's just kind of the veteran tryhard guy. And so when they brought in Priest, I was like, okay, well, we'll see how this goes. But within the first like game or two, I was like, I was sold. I was sold. I mean, me and my mom were talking about it, and he he's just, I don't know, there's something about him. He's, he's really fun to watch. Exactly. He's the like Casey Sezikas. Re- yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. He, oh, Casey. Love him. Yeah, um, I, I made her into a Casey Sezikas fan, guys, by the way. He, yes, and the big head, I made that, by the way. Yes, I'll take did, for that. Did. She gets all the props for that big head. <laughs> she, but he, uh, I don't know, there's just, he's, he is definitely a, it's so, it's such a cliche, but he's such a veteran presence that I think we need right now, especially um, ever since Landy went down and he's been hurt. It's been kind of a, it's been a little bit of a struggle. So um, bringing in Priestley, I think was helpful. And he, um, I did write down how much he has produced. He got nine points in 28 games, um, which I mean, yeah, he's playing on the fourth line. So of course he's, his production is not going to be yeah. massive, but yeah, uh, for 
how much he has been playing, I'm it's still yeah, mad. I'm good. I I'm still players who barely get one to two points. Uh, exactly, uh, especially on um, this offensive Avs team. So yeah. And I, I just want to do a quick update. Uh, so Mikey goes, any word on Dobson? Dobson did not skate today. Islanders did a morning practice skate this morning. I said this morning twice. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, Dobson was present. He is still day-to-day upper body injury. Stefan said, looking at uh, Stefan Rosner, who does Islanders media, said that he looked he looked on the play that Dobson got hurt. It looks like Alex Romanov going after the puck accidentally slashed his wrist. So it looks to be possibly a wrist injury, but still no practicing from Dobson. Um, we we have no idea what's going on. And Was said he is still day-to-day. Um Prince Chickenwin says, uh, wouldn't expect Dawson until at least game one of the playoffs. That's what we're expecting is that he's going to be out these last two games of the season, which is a huge goddamn loss. Yeah. A huge goddamn loss to us. Um, like, he's our best offensive defenseman. And that's a straight fact. He has, what, he yeah. had like 60 assists or something insane like that this season. And the, only other, been a the only other Islanders defenseman to do that was Dennis Potman. And you know he won four straight cups. So that's that's the biggest thing that's been crazy. And I like this comment. If the Islanders had Wa all season, Zach is probably an Islander again. I agree. Zach said Islanders are nothing. Um, if we had Wa and started his system earlier in the season, I feel we wouldn't have cost that. We wouldn't have blown so many games. I feel like we would have been in a much better spot second or maybe maybe even first in the metro maybe you know if you think about like the 15 16 ot losses we have times that by two put that on our points oh yeah exactly so it's like you know how many of those do we deserve i don't know but you, that's 30 points staring you right in the face so yeah i i kind of agree there maybe because he he wants playoffs he wants to win so we'll, we'll see i i kind of agree with that Oh man, <laughs> Addy, the amount of sign creativity from Tony <laughs> off the charts. Uh, and yet, I always ask her for sign ideas, and she goes, "I don't know." I have, dude. Unless it's like something specific now, I am. I don't know. I used up all of my creativity in eighteen nineteen season. It's just been downhill since then. <laughs> uh, David goes. Kim Varley is your confirmed. Star- oh, I thought he was asking. I was like, yeah, he is going to be our confirmed starter. Yes, Varlamov is in net tomorrow for the New York Islanders. I am making a sign inspired by this one over here. Actually. Varley, Varley. So Varla monster. Yeah, so I'm going to make a sign, but where the Varla monster? Yes! Hey, that's funny. Where'd you get that from, oh, no. Kim? <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> so, Barley loved that sign, by the way, so... Oh my god, really? He did. Like, he you actually right me where the Varla monster... I just remember Varla monster, and I, I've been calling him that since. Yeah, I have a sign. I made a sign for him uh, AC 19 season. It's, I, it was, yeah, I'm borrowing Beware that. the Varla monster. I brought it, and I brought it to practice, because so I wanted to get it signed, and he's like, Oh, I saw that. I love that. And he's like, "Can I sign it?" And I was like, oh "Yeah, my gosh, sure." I make the sign. Oh my! He God. was so excited about it. I'm I thought so it was excited hilarious. to make this now. Oh, it was like the most, yeah. you know, enthusiastic I've ever seen him in person. So, yeah, no, you, you know, you, you, let's talk about Varlamov being because you know Varley. Obviously, he was with yeah. the abs in, with mm-hmm. Patrick Waugh, too. Yeah, um, exactly. That's That was a very interesting reunion. Patrick I was not at all Waugh surprised to see this. Comes to the New York Islanders. And Varlamov, he said in an interview, I had goosebumps hearing that Patrick Ball was my new coach. Literally said he had goosebumps. He did like... He really Mance did like walk has popped off mm-hmm. <laughs> from the New York Islanders, especially in the stretch where we needed him to. He has come to life. His positionings are on point. He has been so focused. And I have never seen this man celebrate so hard since the 2021 bubble. Oh, I love Varley. <laughs> I the love Varley him. I'm, I do miss him. I haven't seen that energy since the Varley slide. And after games, he is <laughs> waving his stick around. He's like, <laughs> he literally spun hug Romanov after the game. Like, I have never seen him so like excited and happy. Oh yeah, no, he ugh, Varley's great. Like, the his last season here was rough because he was. We didn't have that great of a team. I mean, we were a playoff team, but like I don't know, he, he kind of lost the net to Grubauer, mm-hmm. and that was kind of it. I mean, he didn't play any of the playoffs, so but it's it was brutal. I mean, because he was so important while he was here, and I 
it's a bummer that the teams that were put in front of him um, during his like prime, I guess you could call it, were so bad. <laughs> Cause wow. like the 13, 14 apps, he was so good. Like literally that he was, they basically carried him to, uh, he carried that team to first in the division. So, mm-hmm. and that was under Wah. Um, But yeah, he, he just struggled with injuries down the stretch. Yeah, in the 17 18 season, yeah. it was just, yeah. That's but towards the weird. end, it was it was time for him to go. But we were sad to see him go. Yeah, like the, and then, you know, and I saw that when I came to Colorado myself, mm-hmm. and I saw you guys like there were so many Varley signs of Abs fans coming yeah. to our side. I'm like, oh my god, and there still <laughs> is every time. Every time I understood, I love town, that though. People like, love that, Varley. That we love Leonard. our guys. That was us with Leonard when he came back. Like yeah. everyone was on the freaking Vegas side with like mm-hmm. Leonard signs, like. Man, you know, same thing happened with Beauvillier. You know, when you have a yeah. beloved, beloved player. Oh, yeah. Like, it, I love to see that. I love to see that they're still love. And I I, I'm pr- I hope they, I'm pretty sure they appreciate the hell out of it, too. Oh, I know they do. I, I mean, Eric Johnson's a great example of this when well, he, he came can. back this year. <laughs> he, oh, warm-ups was really fun to watch because I, okay, in all of the warm-ups I have been to as an Avs fan when he was on the Avs, I saw him interact with fans like twice. Like he is not one to just like interact with fans during warmups. He's just not who he is. But huh. that when he came back with Buffalo, um, he every single person along the glass, he stopped in front of them and he said thank you. He went all the way around the glass. No, stop. And I was it was I was with my parents and I had made him a little sign. I was like, We love you, Jay. And I had pictures from like the cup run and just for over the yeah, years and everything you, i remember you sent texting that to me it was it turned out really good and he stopped in front of me and, oh man i just like i teared up and he just he just he's like thank you and he like fist bumped everybody and i was like bro EJ. I'm a cry. <laughs> oh I'm cry. that was that was the the most like the most emotional player return that i in recent years the other I've one for obviously yeah. for me was tyson berry but ej is hands down the most emotional one because he'd been here for so long so and he got the best the best like welcome back yeah it was great i saw the highlights from that like of those like the fans like you know when he got his like you know thank you video and things like Mm -hmm. that i did watch that yeah Um, it's it's incredible to see them get like emotional and shit like oh he cried he cried he was freaking out on the ice like they they had the spotlight on him which i hadn't that that they've never done that for any other player like that i can remember um and he just he did he just started crying and i was like I cried. <laughs> yeah. I cried more than once that night. <laughs> me, me. That the only time I cried with a player return was Leonard. Yeah, and he oh, yeah, and then to Long Island on his neck, and I was like, "No, I'm done. You, I'm, I'm dead. It's over. I'm done." <laughs> Rip the. Here come the tears. I was like, here "Exactly." It's not okay. But, you know, but yeah, so with Varley, it's a lot of big connections with obviously Avs and oh, the yeah. Islanders, but with Walk coming, I mean. I've seen Varley, and I, I th- I've always thought he's a very talented goaltender. Mm-hmm. But under Wa, he's just popped. I don't. It's it's funny because I I mean I haven't really paid too much attention to like yeah. Sorokin this year or Varley, so I was pretty surprised to see that Varley was the one in net down the street. Varley's was like, the starter. Was like, what right happened? <laughs> like Sorokin, he so Varley actually did get hurt for a time. Mm, I remember we, that. Yeah, we only had Sorokin. It was Ken Appleby as our back backup from Bridgeport, and um, yeah, it was it was just rough on Sorokin. He had a long stretch yeah. where he had to play games. At, he's it's been an off year for Sorokin, if you could say, in my mm. opinion. He's still playing pretty well, though. In my opinion, I think he's yeah. still playing great, but it's not to like where he was insane great. Yeah, but you can't expect that every goddamn year from a player. Like it's just yeah. not. It's not realistic. Not. Goalies and, are weird. Goalies and are our just defense weird. is like downgraded, in my opinion. It's been like a little bit less than it has been in recent mm-hmm. years, especially you know losing someone like Barry Trotz, and then we had the lane yeah. system. It was a lot of things, but um, Varley has come through with with Wa coming in. And, you know, he said he had goosebumps and that he, he looked like he was, like, ready to get in the zone. And he absolutely mm-hmm. has. And um, I have no, I, like, I, I would felt, I would always feel good with Varley and Net. But tomorrow I feel secure with Varley and Net. And that's something yeah. that's a different feeling. Yeah. 
he he's man he when he was on the abs he would either be really good like really good or really bad like there was no in between with him but he he was he was so fun like i don't know i i loved varley i was a big varley fan so it was really big bummer to see him go honestly oh yeah i mean there's there's people there are abs fans i know of at least three that i can think of that all have islanders varley jerseys who and they they just love him still yeah I, I love that. No, I love the support for him, but I'm I'm literally gonna make that sign for tomorrow. Yes, do it because I know I, he'll like it. Because I exactly, have exactly. So I'm gonna that make, five years ago. <laughs> I want to make him happy because he's he's been there for us. I want him to feel like mm-hmm. the fans are there for him, especially yeah. since it's all Sorokin, 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 Sorokin. Yeah, exactly. I, I want him to feel some love, so I'm gonna make an, a a Varlamov sign in a yeah. Romanov jersey. But <laughs> <laughs> he I won't mean, know the jersey. Love Romy. <laughs> Russian duo, you know? <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah. But Islanders recap of this week. I always do, Taylor, an Islanders recap of mm-hmm. everything with the Islanders, you know, uh, this past week. I'm so fucking proud of them. <laughs> Holy shit. Me too. It's been fun, dude. I've watched all the games, and I've been calming you down in the chat and sending Six, you our lucky gifts. Zero and one. Yeah. How can I be mad? Exactly. Yes, we lost that game yesterday to the Rangers, which was completely viable to win by the Islanders. Here's the thing about the, the game versus the Rangers. We had every chance in our capacity to win that game. Yeah. Every chance in our capacity. We didn't lose Dobson off the power play. We had five power plays, did not score in one. We had a yeah. penalty shot. Oh, yes, that was Pellick, right? Pellick. Yeah. Did not score. Obviously not the best shooter, but like no. <laughs> he has he won for us an OT versus the Penguins. Mm. Um, but uh, there was every chance in our capacity to win that game, yeah. um, and we we let the ball drop, and you know things like that are bound to happen here and there. You know it's you know I, I'm not going to take anything away from the Rangers team. I mean they, they they're first for a reason, and but I feel like. To play against a first place team and take it all the way to a shootout as is, yeah, is impressive. Exactly. No, that's, uh, I was that's very really proud impressive. of them. We had, I like, you know, the Islanders Islandered in the end, but I was still. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say every time because there's so many where we could have e- easily won that game, but it, I, I we still took a point away, which was major. And then the last six games, I, I mean, holy sh! We won against Montreal. We won against the Rangers mm-hmm. at home. Like, yeah, that game was impressive, man. That was great. Oh, my, I, I was there, and I mean, I posted that third period where I'm like, I took a drink every time they turned yeah. off. The I was like, stop killing me, please. I literally like, like I'm gonna be I trash by the end of this. <laughs> I, I was not driving that night, so I was like, I can do this. But I was literally like purely buzzed. Yeah. By the I'm time sure. <laughs> came around the third, I was like, oh god. <laughs> I was like, I was like, please just end it. Not having a good time. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was literally like, oh my god, I'm not gonna make it. Like, um, I have to give a shout out to the Ranger fans behind me. They were actually fantastic, beautiful That's hockey good. fans. Um, you know, we shook hands at the end of the the game, like good game, like we'll see you Saturday kind of stuff. Like they were really actual like good fans. Like yeah. the jesting was just that. It was jesting. It wasn't anything because I've seen it. I've seen where I've I've gotten to it at Ranger fans at an Islander Devils game. Oh my. <laughs> get this I'm not gonna say you know I don't know her name ranger fan in front of us was gloating that she was a ranger fan she yeah. wasn't in gear but she was gloating with her friends I'm a ranger fan here <laughs> oh jeez Kim's favorite kind of hockey fan <laughs> uh huh and I'm like sitting there like okay but she was rooting for the devils and this is like a month or two in this new into the new season after they'd got their asses kicked in playoffs by the Devils. Yeah. And I'm saying that like I get you hate the Islanders, but like wouldn't you want both teams to fucking lose here? Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, no, I don't want either of you to win. Like, like she would jump up and celebrate when the Devils scored and she, and I'm like It's like that girl at the the Leafs games. Addie is friends with her, I guess. Oh Addie oh. and Ben, who like, well, they, like heard her dad or sees him. And they cheer for the opposition no matter what. And I'm like, cheer for an opposing team. I'm sorry. That's oh, real though, dude. I'm like, come on, get a new hobby that doesn't cost as much. Holy yeah, crap. Facts. But um, th- I got into a fight with her. Oh jeez. 
<laughs> because some people don't know what hockey etiquette is. Yeah. Oh. And she yes. would stand during the play. <laughs> and I couldn't see. <laughs> Oh, you would have been so mad at my dad when we went to the Preds game. He, like, got up in the middle. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, no, at first I'll make kind of, like, a joke out of it. But if they, like, actually start pissing me off, I'll start yelling. Like, I've had a guy yeah. where I was like, down in front. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, or if you actually, like, just keep doing it, I will yell into your face. Like, Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. My mom, like- to a Wild fan, uh, one game, we were losing to the Wild, and, uh, she just looks at this girl, and this girl's trashed out of her mind. Just, and she, my mom's like, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Oh, wild have no oh, cups. And I was like, yeah, let's go, Mom. World, so let's go. We literally had a lead. Like, it was like two minutes left in the game. This girl was so obnoxious. We're like, we have to go. I don't want to get arrested. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting pissed. I think my favorite was leaving. I was in Philadelphia. I was leaving the game. The Islanders lost. Don't remember if it was an OT or something, but we we lost, yeah. and I was just trying to get out of there. And she, this girl, drunk girl, what? you know, going crazy, and she was just saying shit about the Islanders. And I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, say it to the standings or something, because I knew we, we were above them. It's like when they yeah. sucked last year, you oh, yeah. know what I mean? And they she were, goes, I'm, I'm, to my, be now. I'm like, at least my team plays in my state. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> yeah, right. Because I was like, what are you? Po-? She goes, at least my team doesn't play in New Jersey. And I looked at her. I'm thinking about it because I'm thinking about it. I'm like, are you talking about the fucking football team? (laughs) I'm like, wrong sport, honey. I'm like, where we play? I literally put up my crest. I'm like, where we play is right on your freaking crest, honey. Oh, that's funny. That's great. Yeah, no, I I guess she she was just smashed. I'm like, are you talking about football? (laughs) I just love it. I love it. I'm like, go home. You won. I'm like, be safe. Exactly. Leave me alone. I'm like, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let me just mope at my mopiness. Leave me alone. Uh, Prince Chicken Wings goes, drunk or dumb? I think a bit of both. Yeah, probably both. <laughs> Rip up all fans. <laughs> but yeah. That was just a funny Flyers fan. She was just wasted. Did you... Okay, so when you came here for the Abs Islanders, um, did you see the... On YouTube? Okay. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Did you see the vlog? Shameless vlog. Vlog is on YouTube. My YouTube. Watch Watch the vlog. vlog. It's really great. (laughs) Also, our Montreal one is even better. Yeah, facts. (laughs) I made Kim cry. And uh, did you ever? Do you remember seeing the guy with the sign outside that was like, "Hey Islanders, thanks for uh, Taves or whatever it was." Oh yeah. I still have a picture of that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so here's okay. I'm gonna give you my reaction to that trade because I did not know. I knew, I knew a little bit, but it was based on more so like the the playoff run, uh-huh. the Islanders playoff run. Yeah, and he was not good in no, that playoff he, run. He actually was not good that playoff run. No, uh uh-uh. uh. And so when they traded for him, I was like, okay, like everyone's freaking out about this and I don't really I think I'm missing the plot here and one of the uh beat writers one of the like abs beat writers who works for DMVR AJ Hayfley he's also an Islanders fan um they were in the middle of recording a podcast and he saw the trade news and bro he almost shit his pants live on that podcast and like that video circulates every couple years now and it's so funny because he he freaked out he's like they did what? They traded for him to What? Like, it was just, it was wonderful. So, I we do love Taser. We do. I we want love him a moment like that so badly. Like, something, like, crazy like that. Oh, like, dude. It was wild. It was wild. That, I, I feel like I, I got like that when I heard we signed Zidane Chara. Yeah. That was, that one was like, What? Where did that come from? I was, I was shocked. Yes. <laughs> I thought he was going to retire. I honestly yeah, I thought, thought he was done. I didn't think retired. he was done And then it was like New York Islander signs to Daniel Char one year. Oh, that was so long ago. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I was so hyped for that. I'm like, was I with you, Addy? I, I went to New York City. I'm like, damn it. I bought okay. his jersey. I bought it right there. I was like, I don't, I'm like, the wallet. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And I was like, damn it. Who cares? Who cares? Yellow. Yeah, and, the he, and now that it's signed, where's the Dan O'Chara? My Boston jersey signed, my Islanders jersey signed, Boston. the big head you freaking made is signed. 
<laughs> and he didn't even play in Denver. I was so mad for you. I was proposed for you. Like, Are you serious? I was so upset. Uh, man, we had the brutal. sign already and then had to change it last I know that we were like, okay, who are we just going to... I was like, we're just going to... And we went after Casey and Pedro. <laughs> exactly. Casey never reads signs at warm-up. He... I was like, Casey! I just made my camera... Remember he took the penalty? I was like, Casey! That's how you get her now! I was like, I made you a big head and a sign that I'm not even an Islanders fan! <laughs> Come on! That picture of us together holding the big heads is amazing, though. It is a cute one. Very <laughs> cute. Uh, like Pittsburgh will be eliminated... Though, with a loss to Nashville tomorrow. Go Nashville. I think your chances are good. Go Nashville. Yeah, Islanders yeah. still can clinch tomorrow. The Islanders have to win against the Devils to clinch. We need the full two points. Our magic number is now two. Uh, before the Rangers, our magic number was three. We got a point, so magic number goes down to two. We need a full two. If we get a point, Capitals and Detroit both have to lose. And I believe in regulation. Yeah, I think so. I think that's why I saw too. And I don't want to deal with that again where they both won on the same. I was like, son of a <laughs> Maple Leafs and freaking Lightning. I was like, I have to root for them. And of course, the night, like, I want to root for them. They both lose. <laughs> oh, I, I know. When you put, okay, Kim put in our group chat, she's like, okay, go Leafs. And I was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I, I was like, I didn't say go Leafs. I wrote to you guys. I was like, Leafs better pull fucking through. <laughs> like, yeah, so I was like, oh boy. She's you were like, she's like, like, to bar like something must be you. seriously wrong right now. <laughs> I ha It's for the betterment of the Islanders. So it's for the greater I good. It's for the greater good. No, it, it literally hurt. It literally, like, you could see, it was so funny because it's like, even I put it on like Twitter, like the guide to like how we have yeah. to like look at the, and I'm like, yeah, we have to root for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, rooting for teams you just like loathe. Yeah, it's painful. <laughs> Mije, he he's a lightning fan. He goes, Our DNA is to fuck your team over, Kim. Honestly, it is. The Tampa Bay Lightning. I swear to God, they have sat down and they're like, the Islanders need a win. We're losing tonight, boys. Put it on FanDuel. <laughs> Yo, you you in Pinto? <laughs> oh, I hate Tampa. I hate Tampa. So I hate him. I hate him. Uh, can we talk about Mark Stone coming back? Oh, oh. <sighs> Vegas pisses me off. Okay. With the right. last three, it's spleen. Okay, also, here's the thing. Remember when they traded for Hurdle and they were like, oh, he won't play till next year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next yeah. Season. And then he's in at the end of the regular season? Cap circumvention. Cap um, circumvention. excuse me? And yeah, now Mark Stone, like, Bro, I swear it's like. But it they, worked. The Lightning did it. Now Vegas. Thing. And guess what? They both have cups. Oh, gall. Yeah. Maybe. Whatever. Maybe we should look into this. I hate them. I don't care. But. <laughs> I here's the thing. Tampa is less painful to me for some reason. Vegas is just like so obvious that it's like we're not dumb. Like literally, you can look at the the cap friendly transaction of like Mark Stone. And it's been the same exact thing for the last, like, three years. It's insane. It's three years in a row. Oh, it's it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I can't... Uh, I well, hate who that was, like, the big passion. reporter who literally went... Like, he was like, oh, my God. He was like, I literally have reported about this. He goes, lacerated spleen is very, very, you know, it's yeah. a bad injury. And he goes, but of effing course, he comes back right now. Like, yeah. one of, like, the major writers. I think it was Sarah Valley who was like, oh, you got to be Probably. Kidding. He's been savage on Twitter. Yeah. Right but him. Josh, he's a Preds fan. He goes, "Why?" Uh, don't I don't know, man. Okay, <laughs> it's been really painful lately. <laughs> the Jets. We were talking about uh, the oh, Jets beat you what seven nothing? Uh, yeah, dude. They just okay. Here's the thing. I turned on that game. I'm watching it. The first like couple minutes, like okay, they get scored on. I'm like okay, well that wasn't great. And then they get scored on again. I'm like okay. There are four shots on goal. They've scored twice, and you have still no shots on goal. It was that moment where I knew that they were going to lose. Um, I did not even watch the whole game. I turned it off after the first period. I was like, I have better things to do with my day because this is just – they didn't even show up, dude. Like, the, the post-game pressers, it was, an ins it was insane. Literally, Andrew Cogliano didn't break a sweat. Nathan McKinnon didn't break a sweat. Like, guess why? I uh, why are they gonna break a sweat? Why are they gonna try? 
They got to save man, the that's juice. Why. Whole mice. They got to save the juice. Whole mice. This team sucks on the road. We are terrible on the road. Last year, we were the freaking road warriors. We set the freaking NHL record for like the amount of consecutive road wins. And then after that, they were like, uh, we're not on a win on the road anymore. What's that's that? like us with our peak peak pay and power play. They just decided to disintegrate altogether. Like yeah, we had a great PK, that. no power play. And then suddenly our PK died, but we had a power play. Now we got nothing. Yeah. Our PK is terrible right now, too. <laughs> now so we have I'm absolutely crazy. nothing. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's I I couldn't tell you. I I have not been this like nervous for a first round matchup in years. Like, you know, I can't I, remember I the last time I was like, it's about round ones because I'm kind of like, Ugh. fuck it. Anything can happen. I start to get nervous when it starts to get round two, I would say. Uh, see, we are like round one warriors. We just get out. So it's fine. Like, we're <laughs> fine. And so I just like, I'm like used to these sweeps and like, you know, we're all, we just kill them in the first round. And so then last year was just horrible. I mean, like, we didn't have the team, there were so many injuries. So that many was a injuries. heartbreaker for the Islanders. It was just like, especially it was never... that that yeah. that game, the way we did. With, I mean, with Sorokin, like, I I, I don't even blame Roki. Like, that could have happened to any fucking goaltender. Yeah, it, like they're literally of our group chat. It was kind of funny that and they missed the high season, the, but... the Leafs were the ones who made it to the second round. I was like, really? You've got the Avs, Islanders, and the Leafs, and we're they're the ones that made it to the second round last year. Yeah, it was brutal. I was glad they went that the Avs went out in the first round last year, honestly, because like it was they needed some time to heal. I wanted um, them to miss the playoffs completely. So this is something of interest I want to ask you about. Gabby Oates says, uh, won an Islander Ranger matchup so bad. Uh, mm. as an outside voice looking in, what would you rather see? Islanders Canes or Islanders Rangers? Islanders Rangers, man. There's so much blood there. Like Islanders Canes, I feel like has the potential. I don't know if I would be, be... able to breathe. Oh, it, Islanders Rangers would be like from just like Here's an outside perspective. That. I would love that. Like the bragging oh, rights would, would be up. insane. The bragging rights would be used for years. Exactly, it would be insane. But here's the pr- it's like I guess it's like big bets, big rewards. Mm-hmm. But you know, it also means big losses if it goes yeah. the wrong way. But it would be fun, man. Like because the kick the blood, Rangers, the bad Adam blood there Blair, oh. would make my heart sore. It would be so much fun. I would. Oh my god! Like, I feel like, you know, we saw it with the freaking Rangers Lightning. One guy getting his lights knocked out. Like, imagine Islanders Rangers. This thing's gonna get intense. Well, and like the Islanders Canes has the potential to be just a boring series because like the two, because like both teams are just really. It's a it's a rematch too, especially since we exactly. But it's like I know Paul on Mayfield. That yeah. Series. Oh my god! I know that with that series was brutal because I have a really good Canes. Especially kind of high stick. Yeah, I'm looking mm-hmm. at you, Canes fans. I had my I had you in one ear and then I had them in the other, and I was like, I am Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> like I have no opinion here. I was oh, I I, oh, no, I was pissed, man. I was pissed that oh. I was in the seats when it happened. I literally wanted to like. Go over the railing. <laughs> I was more invested in that series than I was the Av series last year. So, yeah, well, it was like, like the Kraken. It was awful. Saying, like you, like we won the cup. Like because we've, we've said that about each other when the Islanders like weren't in and mm-hmm. like you, your Avs were. I was like, go Avs, go. I was like yeah, all for you guys. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like if the Islanders get kicked out, I'm like gonna be like all Avalanche all the way because I've already said it on the podcast. They were like, who would you root for? I'm like. Avalanche because my best friend's team is literally the Avalanche. So <laughs> they're dope. That's why exactly. you really drive me insane. And get that get that man a cup. So uh Ugh, I, have- I want I want them to win a cup for him. Like that's that's like my soul re- like of course it'd be great to see it again, but it's like I would love to see him get a cup because he's God, been away like, for so Dobson long. Be out in five. Well, Dobson, I think, is a big key factor. I think we could still make a series. I, yeah, it'll be it just it's gonna be tough without him, but especially like you have to remember we did this six game streak while Dobson was having like not playing to his fullest. Yeah, Dobson had a, a like a skid where he mm-hmm. really was he he was causing more goals than gaining actually, yeah. and a lot of people were critical, me included, of Dobson. Um, because in you know, and even the reporters have said he had a, a lull. He just recently was starting to come back into his game, 
starting to show up, be on the scoreboard, you know, uh, be, be more present on the puck. But um, you got to remember, guys, like uh, he we were still winning games even with him in the lull. Yeah. I think it's absolutely possible for us to make a series even without Dobson, but I do think he will be back for playoffs. I did see someone say a source said he would be back for playoffs. Fingers God crossed, willing. man. God willing. Uh, but yeah, uh, they said, do you think he'd all back for playoffs? He was practicing. I don't know if it was contact, but... Um, I think he was contact. I thought I saw I think that. He was contact, but he was yeah. practicing, so I say yes. I yeah, say he and I was talking to Jordan about that, my fiance Jordan, who's a Rangers fan. And he's Sunshine. like, <laughs> but he was very nervous. He's like, I just don't want them to rush him, you know, and just like get his ass out there just because and, you know, yeah. all that because he, he he's such a valuable player. He's like, I don't want them to rush him into this. But, you know, it. I don't I don't know. Well, honestly, they're they are deep, man. If they can, like, they don't need to rush him back. I feel like they, they but don't I feel like they to. are. Uh, well, well, if they do, that's stupid, and it's gonna backfire on him, and I'm gonna laugh. Yeah. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't potentially end his career. Yeah. Yeah, and I I agree 100 percent with him on that take. And this is where uh, having an opposite fiance kind of is nice to talk about opposing views with, even though we fight over some things. But uh, <laughs> he. I have to give it to my fiance here. Um, the Adam Pellick incident. Let's talk about the Ranger game. If you, oh, Adam. man. That was just so... Are you kidding me? There are Ranger fans who are going for Pellick's head. Dude. Are you serious? Like, it was He's so obvious. Led, apparently. Contact. Like, Zabinja just, like, whoop, just, like, ran right into him. Like, he was not oh, even looking thing. in his direction. Do you think I'd be able to show it on stream? The incident? I doubt it. No. No, um, no but copyright you. As I was in my seat, I was in the seats. You know, obviously, I was there at, at UBS, and I remember just seeing like bodies. You know, you see it in the peripheral, like someone just sprawl on the ice, and yeah. I looked, and my eyes met uh, the the referee Kelly. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, Wa said it was like Kelly Sutherland or something. It was right yeah, there, Sutherland, yeah. right on the blue, right on the blue line, and I and I can tell, I know for a fact. Because the first thing I looked, when I looked over, I saw the bodies. I saw him go, mm -hmm. like, immediately wave off. It is not a penalty. It's because it wasn't. Exactly. Like, nothing happened. Like, yeah, they ran into each other. It happens all the time, actually. And, I don't know, just Laviolette would be, like, vicious. That's a Laviolette for you, though, man, dude. He I lost a major dramatic coach, along with Paul Maurice, on the planet. Here's the thing, though. I have a thing with, like, Mika where I'm on the fence about it because I lost respect for him, I, even though I had little to begin with. But <laughs> uh, he, in his interview after, mm -hmm. they asked him, like, what, what happened with the incident, blah, blah, blah. He took no responsibility. Oh, yeah. He was, he was he like, was Ish, like oh. I hope it wasn't, you know, incidental. Da, da, da. Exactly. Like, it was so dramatic. I was like, really, dude? But did he say it not to undermine Laviolette? I know. I doubt it. Honestly, I don't think it was that deep. I think he's just being a dramatic pansy. Like that's the only way I would be like, okay, I can see why he would say it. But if it's not, if not it's me. like about you, why would like the, like it, it was? He was directly involved. So who and cares about what you know, said? Like, he's like, I was focused on the play. He was focused on the play, and we just we you know we just yeah. He was looking back. in the opposite direction. Like that's Wab that. handled it so perfectly. He he you know, and he is the epitome of like grace and poise now. Even when giving just shit to other very companies. interesting, I will say, coming from a an Az fan, this is fascinating to watch. He, he has really grown as a coach, and I and I really appreciate it. Um, but he like gave shit to Laviolette in the nicest way he could, like straight up was just like <laughs> something. Like, they think so frustrated. So, like, <laughs> great. <laughs> like I just, I was just like, I fucking love you, Wa. Yeah, but he, it, he has grown. He's grown. He's grown mm -hmm. a lot, and he, he, you know, he said he, when he came in. He's like, I, you know, I look back and I don't like how I left. I don't like, you know, what yeah, I left no. behind. No. And so he, you know, he grew when he coached that younger team. And he he really has learned from years of experience and maybe looking back and regretting moments. So oh, yeah. and, the way he left was brutal. Exactly. He threw a temper tantrum because he wanted more say. And Sakik was like, 
you're the coach, dude. Yeah, I, 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 I did see about this though. I did see it was comment was out of emotion, and I could tell right away because Still, it took dude, like it took come a minute on. to even respond. Because he was like, <sighs> you it know, just, no, it it would. Uh, I don't know. I <laughs> that the was whole thing was just ridiculous. But yeah, um, so I just want to say they they said about the Dobson hit on Trocheck, and yeah, it was aborting, but it was ten seconds left in the game. Yeah, it wasn't make it. It wasn't like I don't know. I sure like I don't know. Call it. Oh, Trocheck was. Oh my! I was sitting there like shocked. I'm like, how is this guy not getting like a misconduct? Even though at this point, it's like there's like five Trocheck was left. very dirty like, this last. game. He was brutal. And he, he was, was very dirty. Screaming at the game. ref, and I'm like, dude, like that's got to be a fine at least. Come on, grow up. He was very very vicious this last game. He was very vicious. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was, uh, oh, I was like, are you serious? Would you just stop talking? Holy crap. What kind of got crazy to me where I was like, Rempy's going to do this, that, and Rempy did shit. <laughs> he's like, he's like, uh, you know, Curse McDermott. He he's did just, a hit on it, Pelic against the board. And like, he's like, he's six foot eight. Like, the guy's yeah. fucking huge. Like, huge. of course he's going to lay him into the boards. But like, the cheers it got, I'm like, Bro, Pelic didn't even do anything. Mm -hmm. You guys wanted him to run Dobson. Well, guess what? He's hurt. Ugh. Goodbye, master plan. Exactly. Like, oh. It's okay. Rempy joins the McDermott club. Let's talk about, you know, since we're talking about Rempy and fighting, um, can we talk about Pajot and Gallagher? Going oh, to yes. this Montreal game? Mm -hmm. Pajot, my tiny king. <laughs> He's so him, I mean, they do have a history, him and Gallagher do have a history running back mm -hmm. to when, you know, Pajot was on the Sens and everything. And yeah. I, they they went back and forth. But, y'all, just like, he know, he had the opportunity. What happened was uh, Pajot was along the boards. He he took a hit. He, you know, he took he threw one back and Galley was right there. And he pushed Galley. And he, I bet he told him, like, yeah, you want to go for it? And I just saw both of them throw him off. I'm like, oh, here we go. I was like, here we go. <laughs> And he definitely did that for Pelic. Um, going yeah. back to the elbow he threw on Pelic. Yeah, um, that was it. Was fun. It was fun to watch. I was like, damn. Okay. I was just shocked because I I really thought it would be Martin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. Like that would make sense. Not I mean, Pajer <laughs> with the history, but like it, it was a long time since they've truly gone at it. No, he other, took but... his moment. He doesn't like him. He was just like, let's go. Yeah, pretty much. Got an excuse now. <laughs> pretty much, honestly. But yeah, no, Pager, it, it, he, and we did the Pajot chant while he was in the box. That was so much fun. Like, I don't know if you heard it on the, the, on top of oh, yeah, no, you could we hear were doing it, the Pajot it. chant. Like, we, the fans appreciate it. We, that's what I'm talking about being a character player. Yeah. Um, and as much as I, you know, I'll say it, I think Rempy is a little bit of a character player for the Rangers as well. Oh, you know, he brings is. that physicality side, something that they've been lacking actually is physicality. Mm -hmm. They wanted to bring Tom. That has Truba on That's it. That's why they brought um Reeves in the yeah. first place when they oh, when they yeah. had Ryan Reeves. Yep. So when they have something like a a, a Rempy, um, it's been something they've been searching for as someone who can bring that like offensive, like uh, aggressive edge to their game. Mm -hmm. So that's not something where I can understand why Ranger fans have appreciated him so much. Yeah, I can see it. I just from a Western Conference perspective, I'm like this kid needs to just dial it down a little bit if he's gonna have a very 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 short career uh yeah um i have it on video evidence it's on my twitter <laughs> i remember you Your angle laid a check against the boards i i should have put money on it man i would have been a billionaire he laid a check i know I it to victoria not what he does like victoria a miracle has a <laughs> Oh, and I she like, loves him too. I was like, he's hitting. I was like, Angle's hitting. I was like, oh my god! You can literally hear it on the video right after he does. He goes, I'm like, oh my god! Holy shit! Literally though, I was, Lord, I've never seen Angle lay a check. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't recall. Maybe like one time when he was on the Leafs, but that was it. Angle was flying after that goal got. He was pissed. Yeah, he was. Well, Abel was pissed. And you mm -hmm. know what sucks? It was offsides, absolutely. It was yeah, it was. It but was. he was being pushed forward by Goudreau over the blue line. Like, they were just both in a forward motion. But, yeah. like, Goudreau was behind him, like, kind of pushing him, which kind of sucks. Yeah, exactly. I know when it's, like, not their doing, you're like, 
<laughs> yeah, and like and people are saying, Engvall scoring goals all of a sudden. Yeah, no, and suddenly out of his back pocket, Engvall was like, oh yeah, I have this shot. But I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, he has a great shot. Like, but, I don't know. Engvall's such an interesting goals. player. I've seen Engvall put it right into the chest of the goaltender. Just like, yep. Oh, yeah. And then he pulls out that he's been sniping. And I'm like, what mm -hmm. the? Okay. I was like, okay. Yeah, he's he's what an interesting player. I don't know. Have, especially following a touchdown to the chest. Uh, all right, guys. I don't know. Get I don't know. Belts on. This, okay, here's the thing. I'm going <laughs> to I am gonna say there's, this is like not really controversial, but it's kind of controversial. It depends on who you talk to. Um. The problem with the abs right now is Alexander Georgiev. Oh, he is it. not a starting goaltender. He has never been a starting goaltender. Last year was a huge outlier. And this year, he has just shown what he's been his entire career. Like, the guy just... Here's the thing with I've discovered with him is that he will start off really great, but the second there's any, like, challenge, he lets one in. He crumbles like a cheap lawn chair. Oh, Sunshine, I hate him. I cannot stand <laughs> him. You can have him back. Like, I'll give him to you for free. We'd be better off without him. Like, he's horrible. And, like, granted, okay, I was, I was say, the Ranger this. fans in the chat, how are we feeling about that? Oh, he's awful, dude. Like, you guys can have him back if you want him that so badly. Like, go for it. He's terrible. Like, um, no. He, he, I mean, on multiple occasions this season, he has broken a stick he threw a broken stick at the equipment guy dude like the guy has Wait, no yeah he threw a broken stick at the, at the equipment manager i was like what are you doing like Why would you do that? He, he crumbles he has no like mental fortitude basically like once he <laughs> once he is challenged and once he starts to like struggle it's over he just they they he start coming in he, bunches he, he just can't get it together no. And he, I mean, it, it's it's just brutal. Like, he cannot get himself out of that hole. And, like, people love to be like, well, Kemper this, Kemper that. I'm like, Kemper had one eye during the Stanley Cup final and still put a better number than Vasilevsky. So, tell me again how he was worse, worse than Georgiev. Like, no. It's just brutal. I, I cannot, I, ugh, I can't stand him, though. Um, I I have more confidence in Ananin than I do in Yuryev. Because here's the thing. I have his, their stats. So, in Ananin's last seven games, because he's only played, no, 13, so I had 10 games, 10 games. He has a 925, 1.7 goals against. Yuryev's last 10, 860, 3.5 goals against. Just in Yuryev's last, let's see, how many? Um, four, I have to... Add numbers are hard. 12, 13, 14. Uh, in his last one, two, three, four, five games, he's let in 22 goals. She's that's insane. That's he a is lot. he's not good. And people are like, the defense this, the defense that. I'm like, at a certain point, you need to save. You need to step up and take responsibility. Exactly. So I mean, even Bednar after the game today was like, Yeah, he didn't make the big save we needed him to. That's wrong. Because we were up 3 nothing. He was playing great. One goal goes in, it's over. It was yeah, over. You saw him goals. crumble. So, yeah, no. That's really tough when your your goalie's not mentally tough. Oh yeah, it's it is going to be the thing that will I mean, honestly, yeah. I'm I am unless they play love about having in, a block. Yeah. He he knows his uh, you he know gets what, goalies. I, you know what he said to Adam Pellick before his uh penalty shot? What? Have fun. <laughs> See that's, that's gross, man. Because like said. that like, would never have come out of his mouth when he was here. They were like, "What did Wa say to you before the penalty shot?" Did and then Pelly goes, "Have fun." <laughs> you're like, "You're literally. never gonna have another opportunity to do this, so enjoy it." Yeah, no, literally. Wa well, just told him, "Have fun." I, I mean, I would have maybe been a little bit more aggressive towards Pelic, but like, get the sh you know, like, focus, you know, make a move, do something. Yeah, I don't know. I would have been more. Strategic. I don't know. I mean, like, was it would have made a difference, though? Uh huh. This I is mean, like, third he knows period. he needs to score, I, but here's this the thing he the knows he needs period. to score. We're up a goal. by one singular goal. Yeah. We need an insurance goal. And here comes the penalty shot. And you got Pellick, who's not a goal scorer in and any way, shape, need, or form. And we need points like water because of this to, to clinch. 
But also, if you put too much pressure on him, he's going to miss it anyway. I just like <laughs> anyway. have fun. If you can get it, if you can get it, awesome. If you don't, oh well, water under the bridge. Like you're a defenseman, it's fine. That I can understand. I, I guess Matt Barzell's first penalty shot against them, the, the first game, I was a little bit... Here's the thing, Barzell is like 0% in the, the shootout this year. Penalty and shots like, and I'm shootouts like, Why awful. didn't they put Barzell in the shootout? I'm like, because he sucks. He's that. bad. <laughs> like, because he hasn't scored once. It's okay. It's McKinnon's pretty bad in the shootout. I, 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 this is what, I will always hate the shootout because it is yeah. not indicative of who should win no it's it the never. worst way to end games it will it always be the worst bullshit. way shootouts are bullshit and even when we win in shootout i don't like it no i don't like it the only time i enjoy winning in a shootout is when it was 18 19 season when the abs were where oh, the yeah. islanders are right now so I don't and know we had a shootout at the end of the season that was this, fun. Act- this actually happened the ESPN guys, who by the way were just no. riding <laughs> that 94 cup by the rangers of course they, they were, were just like, I'm gonna say, they were just dick riding the Rangers 94 cup. They were like, Rangers, like every single commercial. Did you know the Rangers won the cup in 94? Like, we were like, I was sitting there, like, watching it during work. Like, how many times am I gonna hear that that they won the cup in 94? Like, it yeah, was dude, really they bad. haven't won the cup in so long. But I'm like, uh, we like, I'm like, we gotta, <laughs> like, but going on from there, um, before the game, they went up to Barzell. They're like, "How you feel about?" No- I forget what freaking number uh, Rempy is, but yeah, they're I like, don't "How do you feel about that number? Whatever, seventy something, you know, skating around there. You know that Rempy guy playing over there. How you feel about it?" And he's like, "Are you scared about it?" And Barzell goes, "No." <laughs> he's like, "I'm just here to win the game." No. He's like, yeah, seventy three. There we go. I knew it was seventies, but he's like, "Are you scared about that big number seventy three?" They're over there, and Barzell's like, "No, I don't really care." Like, we just came to win the game. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm not here to cause exactly problems. Not what they wanted to hear. And oh, I was exactly. Like, He's not playing into it. Barzell is a true Islander, and I fucking love him. He is an absolute true Islander. I mean, the Tavares thing. Do you, do you know, know about that? I don't, I don't know if I know. The I'm not cap? sure. But the no, I don't, I don't think I know. So, the, the first time the Leafs came back against the New York Islanders. You know, t- John Tavares mm-hmm. got the thank you video. Obviously. Oh, yeah. That was the, the, the big yeah. snake game, as they called it. Um, I actually m- made my schedule for the spring semester uh, so I could go to that game. I knew <laughs> that's, what day. That's commitment. I knew it was like a Thursday or something, so I made classes so I didn't have anything Thursday nights. Like, I was like, nope, I'm going to be going to that game. I won't be there. <laughs> but... Um, I what I didn't see it obviously because uh, I was there, but mm-hmm. someone picked up on the stream because obviously you know the player stick tap you know when the player gets their thank you video, and yeah. someone found on the stream they caught it. I don't. Everyone was stick tapping except for Matthew Barzell. <laughs> That's great. And Barzell was just skating backwards, holding a stick while everyone else is like hitting the the bench like He's for like no. Nope. Barzell went no. Nope. Nope. I and everyone was like oh. <laughs> It was like, let's go, the kid who won the that's a, you know? Oh, that's fantastic. And it was like, like everyone knew right then. They were like, we have Barzi forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And everyone was like, I was like, everyone's like, everyone's like, that he's a true Islander. But like, I was, that was insane. Like, I really feel like Barzell and Tavares really, truly had a feud on the team. They must somehow. have. They must have. Because, like, that is, hockey players are not... Petty, but like to not even say you know? in that interview, yeah, you know, like he knew his name. You played with him, you know, like how long? I really do feel like Tavares was maybe threatened by Matthew Barzell being that new rising star. Yeah, I could see it. I don't know because I don't know Tavares. Well, I mean, had, like, that was like that Tavares was similar has to like same personality of Connor McDavid. He does. He's about as interesting as watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's the same, not. Like, he's personality. <laughs> He's awful. Well, I mean, that was kind of it's similar to like when McKinnon was drafted and he and he came into the league and Duchesne. It was the same thing. It was like Duchesne was the man at that time, and then yeah. this kid comes in and yeah, it didn't go over well. Mm-hmm. So bye bye, Dutchy. Still don't miss ya. Damn. <laughs> I hate that guy still to this day. There's no part of me that will ever cheer for him. Like, nope. <laughs> don't like him. 
but yeah, that that was always just very interesting to me. But um, some players still have good, and I think Lee was hinting to that. Some players still have a good relationship with Tavares, which I don't mind. I mean, you play with him for yeah. years. Like I can understand the bond forming. Yeah. Um, but and we were at the meet and greet event for the season ticket holders, and Anders Lee is like, you know, like, do you have like any? player that was like your favorite or something to like get dinner with or something like that or, like hang out with and he goes he goes oh man i think i'll have to change his name and i'm like oh, oh. No. like, oh. <laughs> like it, it, at first i was like what and then i was like oh oh, oh. he knows what he's about to say <laughs> he like moved on from the subject very fast and i'm yeah. like he meant to verse <laughs> yep yeah that was crazy Lowell Wings? Are they playing tonight, the Red Wings? Oh, no. yes. No? No, they played last night. They played Toronto yesterday. Yeah, I was going to say. Sorry, someone said Lowell Wings in the chat. I thought he meant, uh, like, tonight, but Flyers drop off, too. That big thing in the East, oh. man. Dude, they went from, like, I thought they were, I was like, yeah, they're in. Like, yeah, there's no way. And then all of a sudden, and then the like, Islanders were like, no, bitch. <laughs> Well, and I okay. So I had a conversation with my mom about this because she asked me, and I was like, I don't think the Islanders are gonna make it. And this was like when they were still like, I don't know, seven or eight points out, and I, I was, was like, No, always, I don't think they're gonna I make mean, it. I'm always the optimistic one, you know, I am, and I'm I, the opposite. I <laughs> on these podcasts, of me saying, Listen, I'm always optimistic. I always feel like they can do it, but it doesn't look good right now, like kind of thing. And my boys, just don't fuck it up tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, they had like their this run they've had is wild because it went from zero to hundred. Like I was like, there's well, no way the they're not gonna make it. I'm like, we're dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now I'm like, we're back, bitch. You know? Yeah. And then like the Flyers, bro, they dropped off. Like, what, what happened? happened to the Flyers, bro? They just well, I know they they out. lost Sean Walker because he came to the Avs. They lost, um, two but fucking Blue Jackets. Like six yeah. one or something. They got. Like, I mean, hey, the Avs lost the Blue Jackets too. So I mean, this is what I'm. But that's where I the phrase comes from. Any team can win on it's any true. given day, and that's Which the same really thing annoying. about playoffs. <laughs> Just make it. Yeah. Just make playoffs. I don't care how you get in. If you're President's Trophy winner or you make it in by the skin of your teeth. Just make it. Mm-hmm. Because any team can win a series. It's true. They were talking about it on the ESPN broadcast. How like the past eight seasons, all Presidents Trophy winners like haven't won the cup and things like that. You know, like the best teams haven't won the cup. Yeah, that's why I love the playoffs. Yeah, the the NHL playoffs are very, they're not predictable. No, in, and in some ways they can be, but like they're not predictable. It's for the team with the most tenacity and passion to win, and that's what I love about the NHL playoffs. You know, it's not best, you know, one game, like in like like football or something like mm-hmm. that. You know, it is best of seven. Well, I mean, you like have- 2019 playoffs, we had the wild card chaos. Every single wild card team beat the top yep. seed. And that was insane. Like that year was wild. Yeah. Avs got shut out game one, and then they proceeded to win the next four. So that was awesome. And then, you know, Columbus swept Tampa. That will forever be one of my favorite things. Did the Islanders meet in 2019, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah, we beat Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Stars, they were the other wild card team, and I don't remember who they beat. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while since 2019. It's been five And then the Canes. The Canes beat the Caps because I was hard cheering against the Caps. Was that the year we swept Pittsburgh? Was that the year? I don't know, honestly. Yeah, no, because I I remember because I was in like, yeah, it was because it was my second year of college. It was my second. I was in my college dorm. I was screaming so loud. Some guys came and joined me in the lounge as I was watching the game and we brought out brooms. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, some of the guys like brought up brooms. We were like, Swear. Yeah, when we swept the Bruins. Uh, Bruins. Uh, <laughs> swept the Penguin. <laughs> oh, Sid. Poor Sid. I love no. Sid. No. Sorry, man. Oh, I love Sid so much. Me. Oh, I mean, I'm rooting for the Islanders. But, like, I also love I Sid. Yeah, with him, I don't really like hate him so, or love him. I'm just like, me. He was the first non Avs player that I like loved. Like, Mm-hmm. I love Crosby, like, and I will forever love Crosby. He's just, uh, he's so fun to watch. Still, I don't know what was my first non-Islanders player I ever loved. I don't 
don't know. Chara. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? You're right. I was six. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he was an Islander, but yeah, he was... When I was six years old, my because he was traded to Boston. Because my cousin's Boston fans and stuff like that, so. Boston. Oh. <laughs> it's just my favorite thing in the world. Boston. Every single time. Oh it's God. just like, it's like, it's just habit. Now, every time you say it, I'm like, Boston. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even say it right. Boston. It's because I don't have there any accent, okay? You, go. you gotta get the, the lilt. Boston. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm scared to say it now. <laughs> I will make fun of you. Because yeah, uh, my cousin lives in Boston. <laughs> and they're Boston, they're Bruins fans, okay? <laughs> the Bruins, fans. and uh, I remember playing like NHL with them and like just playing as loving Chara. Mm -hmm. And then I would watch a lot of Bruins games too because my grandma loved Boychuk. Oh, yeah, yep. And then him and Johnny, like, <laughs> and then they were Islanders. And oh, let's get your opinion on this, Islanders. So I, I think we've talked about it in the group chat a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the big rumor is Johnny Boy Chuck may be next GM of the New York Islanders. Bruh, honestly, get Lamarella out of there. I'll take anybody. But one thing since for since Barclay Center, after Johnny retired. That I mean that seems really how long has it been since he retired now? Oh god, he retired in 1819. Or 1920, something around. I think it was 1920. It was 1920 season. I forgot when he that happened. was. Yeah, it was. We were still in Barclays. Yeah, it was 1819 when he had the the, the injury. Was, was like, it 1819? I remember. It was I'm like 99 percent sure. It after, had to have been. It, it had to have been later because I said it was after the 2020 season. 1819 oh. season. So 2020. Mm -hmm. But these past then four years, he has. He sits with Lou Lemerel in his box. Has okay. been had a side. He's been at our draft table. So has he been like Spezza with Dubis? It feels like it a little bit. I mean, honestly, at this point, whoever can get Lamarillo out of there, I'm all for. I'm tired of Lou. Facts. I'm tired of Lou. Dude. I will always be grateful to Lou for listen. He saved. I will still say that he saved a lot of this franchise. It's mm -hmm. respect, it's credibility when we needed it most. I will always be grateful. But every pasture, you know, has an you know every road has an end. Dude, and he he's just so he has overstayed his welcome. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to. And he's just too he's too old school now. Like. He's just too old school now. And it's very obvious in the way he tries to build this team. It's just Yeah. He's too old school. You need you need some new blood in there desperately. So yeah, no, I would be all about it because literally anybody to get Lou out of there. Tell me about it. But coming up this week, the last two games of the Islander season. We play tomorrow against the Devils. And then the last game of the season against the Pittsburgh Penguins. This game could mean everything or it could mean nothing. Depends on tomorrow. So this is going to be huge. Um, with the Abs, what are their last games coming up? Uh, we have the Oilers. Who is the last game? I don't know. I have to look. I was like, there's one more. I'm pretty sure. Wow. I'm very prepared, obviously. <laughs> I know we play the Oilers on Thursday. I guess the NHL up. Oh, yeah. We only have one game left. I was, this is why I couldn't think oh, of okay. it. You yeah, have we have one. one game left. We have the Against Oilers home. on Thursday. Edmonton. Who Thursday? Edmonton. Wow, you guys don't play for a while. Yeah, I know. We've had these weird, we had three days and then we had a back to back. And now we have from here to Thursday. Uh, yeah, no, I, uh, we had like so many weird games recently this month with matinees. Yeah, we. I mean, that's Saturday freaking twelve thirty game. Who the freak yeah. came up with that? We had one thirty today. But oh, uh, you know what? Let's talk about that really fast. Um, this is actually something that really hurts me deeply. Um, Coyotes are moving to Utah, <sighs> Salt Lake City, Dude. and literally the players had to. It was leaked. 
the way that they went about this was so gross because like there was a couple of reports coming out that the i can't remember alex murr whatever his name is the owner that they were still hiring people while they were in the middle of like knowing they were going to sell and there's a good chance that those people that were hired won't even have their jobs (laughs) so it's just it was it's dirty and also there's something that he gets to keep the auctioning rights or something so that if there is an expansion team he gets it's going to go to Arizona and he gets to own that team now or something like it doesn't it's weird the way that they have set this up is bizarre he, yeah. he's just, he drove that team further into the ground and it's I feel so bad for the fans like the it just breaks my heart because if I were that position I don't even know what I'd do Are you kidding I me? know some of the best Coyotes fans from like Twitter um, and Twitch, and, like, uh, you know, shout out to Altex, shout out to Deke Slayer, um, who are diehard Avalanche, uh, Avalanche, uh, I see Avalanche behind you, Freudian, um, Arizona fans. Yeah. And I remember my 15-year-old self back in 2015 when Nassau Coliseum was shutting down, ha- worried I would be in their shoes. hmm I thought I was gonna lose my life. Yeah, it's the, you know your team. I, personally, just for me, my team. This team is my life. Yeah, this is what Same. makes me happy. Going to games, cheering on for the New York Islanders. Mm-hmm. They're my they're my connection to family. They're my connection to a, a base of happiness in my life. And I remember getting really scared and upset that I was going to lose them. And they were like Kansas City Islanders, you know, Houston mm-hmm. Islanders. Oh, uh, you know. You, you know all of that that's oh, yeah. Houston, like Arizona. Salt Lake City. yeah that's why i fucking defended the hell out of arizona fans and i was like keep your heads up don't listen to them you know like i wanted i really wanted the tempe project to go through for them so yeah. bad and, and i think we all did too so it's just uh, i wanted I it so bad i wanted it so bad for them because i remember i remember being in that place when we were at barclay center going is is this the end of my team Mm-hmm. are we done like that's why i'm grateful to lou and i will always be grateful to our late owner charles wong because he kept them on long island he yeah. literally kept us on long island yeah barclay center sucked but it was a necessary evil mm-hmm. it was a necessary evil to that my team is now here at ubs arena and we are here to stay yeah like that security in my heart feels so good mm-hmm. that i know i'm not gonna lose them exactly and the true Arizona Coyotes fans, like I can, I, I understand their pain that they're going through right now, mm-hmm. to a, to a point, I guess, because it never fully went into fruition. Yeah, no, I, I can't. The, I can't they just know. the fans just got so screwed here, and it's and this owner, dude, he is just awful, like awful, Ugh, and also and like. The thing is, Utah is. I think Utah. It has the. Uh, they definitely should be a good hockey market. I could definitely see them being a good hockey market, but not at the expense of the Coyotes. Like, that's what I don't like about this. Is like I would rather them have had an actual expansion team rather than just moving the Coyotes because that just that just sucks. And also for the players too, because like the ones that are oh, yeah. still on contract. You have to uproot your family and your kids and, you know, like, the players that have been there for years, like, Clayton Keller. You know, there's a few down there that, like, have been And mainstays. I think this got the big uh, draft, Logan Cooley. Yeah, exactly. And it's, like, you're – and Shane, Do- Shane Doan's son. What's his name? Yes, yes. His yeah. Name. And he's – honestly makes you wonder if they brought him up to play now knowing that he was not going to be – ever going to be a Coyote. Like that is just so sad to me. Like, uh, it's, it's it's sad, and it's just I hate I hate I hate billionaires who screw up these things, and they just take down so many people in their path of destruction. Like it just pisses me off. It's like you have too much money to play with, and now you're screwing it up, screwing over people's lives too. Like, what are you doing, dude? He's just ew. He's gross. I I wanted to bring that up because I, I I remember I wanted to and I because I just I feel for Yotes fans the pain the the scaredness of what they were going through to begin with and now it's actually become a reality and it's exactly it's 
brutal to watch another it team. It was so her. quick, too. It was just like, girl. it's just, it was crazy. It was like, the rumors had been going on for a long time, but then all of a sudden it was like, oh no, this is actually happening now. Yeah, no, it was like, holy, what? You know, like, it was just like a slap to the face. Well, and also, where they're going to be playing, that arena is not set up for hockey. So the sight lines are going to be terrible. Um, like, because they've done, they've done some preseason games there in yeah. the past and it's not been good. So Gosh. I don't, and like they have another arena they could, that was, that's like a much better option, but they're not going to be using that because it's the jazz. Um, oh, yeah, owner. It's the Vivint jazz. arena they're going to be using. And like, it's not, it's I honestly, it doesn't feel like it's a, any better of a situation because at least mullet, like, you know, it's good for hockey. So I don't know. The whole thing is just it's shitty. Everybody. And... I just feel bad for all parties involved. Like it's except for you know. But yeah, yeah no, exactly. That's a f situation. I mean, this guy just gets to pocket all this money, and then he still gets rights to like the Coyotes. That's ridiculous. Like it's just it's insane. It's like he just he completely screwed this up like big time, and uh, and he's basically being rewarded for it. So, but you know. Gary oh, Bettman's no. NHL, everybody. I was about to say, Gary Bettman, you know, there should he's be... He's allowing this to happen. He's been the He's been the commissioner since the year I was born. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's like, enough. Yeah, it is it so... It should be, like, long. like we have a U.S. president only for four years. It should be the same thing with commissioner. You can only yeah, be... we need to move... Dude, like, this... The... Ugh... Batman has done some good things, but it is so far past time for somebody new to come in. Like he is the ew. NHL like, like dictator. Yeah, I ugh, ugh, I don't like Batman. I don't know what he gets booed every time he gets on the ice, and he's like, I, <laughs> I was kind of bummed. He had freaking COVID when the Avs won the Cup, so we got Bill Daly instead of Batman. And I was like, I'm not even in Tampa, so it's not like I'm booing him in person. But I wanted to boo Batman. That's part of winning the Cup. <laughs> I got screwed on that. I was so pissed. So I need them to win it again so I can boo Batman. Oh, you know what? Someone, he goes, Robert, uh, Batman needs to fix things. Playoff format. I, okay. I just want to point this out. Just because this is something that grinds my gears. Islanders and media. Or Mm. maybe just fan. Maybe I'm just seeing it more because it's on the Eastern side. I have never seen teams bitch about playoff format, loser points, until the Islanders started feeding on loser points and the playoff format. I have never seen the NHL more bitched about playoff format. It's sh- it's should we continue this? Da, 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 until the Islanders started nom 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 and losing points. You know, when the Bruins fucking had 15. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, no one said shit. Original six has 15 l- loser points. Totally fine. Oh, you know what? It's fine. Islanders do it. Nah, we need to fix this. I mean, this also has been, people have talked about this for a while, so it's not surprising that it's coming up again, but I don't know. I just, I don't think it makes a difference. Oh, I'm not going to bring this up. He goes, come on. It's been a conversation for the past decade. Not everything is about the Islanders. <laughs> No, no, no. Tell me the last time they really were bringing it up on the media, on on the air. Tell me the last time. You know, yeah, it's been a conversation. Well, and here's the um, thing. Even if we go back to one, one, uh, one to eight, the Islanders would still be in the playoffs. So, like. Well, here's the thing. When is it why is this a problem? On the NHL Network, like how it has been this past year. When has it been brought up uh, in the past decade, if we want to go there? When has it been brought up like this? Where they, re- they were debating it today. I saw a clip today about them debating about this shit. Yeah. You know, people I don't know. about loser points, get rid of loser points. Da, 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 da. But when you know other teams did it years prior, nah, it's cool. It's kind of just been back and forth, I feel like, for a while. I mean, it's it just depends on the year. Because if there's a lot of teams, like, because they're at, like, Dallas last year was an example of a team that definitely benefited Rangers from fans. loser points. It is not just Rangers fans. <laughs> No, it's everybody, it's but everybody. I don't know, man. I mean, Rangers fans are loud, but it's not just Rangers fans. Oh. It's it's a lot. Like, uh, call. I don't know. There's some teams that I didn't realize some teams have lost a shit ton in overtime. Like, a lot. 
Yeah, and you know what? You, you know what? I love, you know, let's, I'm gonna piss people off. Nom, nom, nom. All those loser points. Fuck y'all. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> yeah, Boston only has one less overtime loss than the Islanders. They have 15. You guys have 16. Huh. I mean, Toronto we're, has we're, 10. So Boston did it again. Interesting. Yeah, and then. I know we just uh, got the 16th versus the Rangers this past weekend. And then, let's see. Yeah, those, like, you've got... And Washington has 11, Philly has 11, Pittsburgh has 12, Montreal 14. Yeah, the most... The it's people us. who are... Or the teams who are benefiting the most from the loser point are all in the East this year. Interesting. Except for the Kings LA, and 11. I was about to say LA. And then, like, the Kraken, which doesn't really count because they're not in the playoffs. <laughs> but, yeah, it's basically the East, honestly. Interesting. Dallas was massively benefiting from the overtime point last year. So I, I was actually explaining the format to, to a doctor I work with the other day. And he was like, wait, you still get a point if you lose in overtime? And I was like, yeah, it's a weird system. I don't know. <laughs> How it's been, it just, you know, exactly. I don't know. I don't think and like somebody did um, went and did the point totals. If it was back to just like the ties right, like and blah, blah, blah. And it was basically the same. Like there was very little change there. So it's like, What's so the what point are we complaining it? about? Yeah. It's, I it's, don't know. Ugh, I just find it ridiculous. I don't know. I just, I don't really care that much. I just hate, like, all the bitching about it. Like, I don't know. It is what it is. You can't, ch- bitching about it ain't going to change it. I don't know. Yeah, it is funny that Boston has also benefited massively from it, but nobody's talking about it. But Boston. no one's talking about that. Yeah, because it's Boston. 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 Yeah. <laughs> We're the New York Saints. I will never forget that series. Okay. <laughs> oh, Boston. Oh, man. But um, I'm going to put it out there. We have, I mean, I've been looking at the clock. I just love talking with you because you're, t- it's, I love you. But <laughs> any last minute questions for me and or Taylor here, you can put us together or you can put individual cl- questions for us. She can ask you, obviously, any a- answers about Avalanche. She's your girl. I'm your girl for Islanders. Like you you still about hate Eastwest. Georgiev. I'm What's on the trade Georgiev train. He's still Bobby. got a year left his contract. Oh my goodness. Bobby with the 10. Thank you. He goes, hi, Kim and Taylor. I'm ready for the NBA playoffs. What the? Nuggets. <laughs> let's go. Dude, nuggets are having here. themselves a what year. Is coming. Our future is bright. Wemby MVP. I don't even know. who <laughs> Wemby's a Jokic. player. Jokic MVP, baby. Let's go. Nuggets and Celtics finals. I know shit about the NBA. I only know a little bit, and I only know because of the Nuggets, because they won last year. Yeah, but thank you for the 10, Bobby. I wish I could a- give you more, but I know shit about the NBA. Let's this go, Nuggets. Chelsea. Let's go, Nuggets. <laughs> uh, David says, what do you think about the other West series will be? I am actually very much looking forward to what is most likely going to be Dallas Vegas, because I just want them to kill each other. <laughs> That is the one where I look at. There's always one series the board every goes back year. To Vegas. Yeah, where they're Get literally the sword, just baby. like murdering each other. That's that all it is. Would be so much fun. Oh yeah, I oh I want I want Dallas to murder Vegas. Like, but I also want them to just beat up on each other. It's kind of hard for me because I hate both. Oh, I hate both too. But I but like I definitely I hate, hate Vegas. Ve- Vegas way I more than Vegas, I hate Dallas. But I hate Dallas because of DeBoer. Oh yeah, no I. Uh, I hate poor. I also hate Sagan, but that's another thing. Same Z's man, he's annoying. Yeah. Um <laughs> let's see, what other the uh, I the, the, probably the, the in, most interesting number. one is probably going to be um Nashville, Vancouver, just because I don't even know what to expect out of that one. But we'll see. Like I said, anyone can win. I would love a of Nashville upset, honestly. I would for Tyson. But like, <laughs> go both national. So, yeah, except for Tyson. But they said who's getting wild card two? Mm. I hope it's the Caps. I was gonna say I think it may be the Caps. Just because I want to see Kemper in the playoffs again. I just, mm, I just don't. I can't wait for them to freaking dick ride Ovi. If they make it, you know, you know, either Penguins or yeah, of course. Capitals, like that's what it's gonna be like. Exactly, that's what they do best, man. Like that's they honestly, they have to get it. 
fuck out of Ovi. They're or so like, they're, they're so close it's not to like retiring. They don't plays, you know what I mean? But it's like we've heard all of this. For I know years. we've all heard it. <laughs> Like but, what I don't know. Like someone like an underrated player, like on the uh, like Sonny Milano on the Caps. Like oh, he's Sonny such Milano. an underrated cap, in my opinion. Throw back to that time he got arrested with AJ Greer. Dude. <laughs> Every time I hear his name, that's what I think about. Summer 19. I they were drunk. I don't remember what they did, but that came out like a month after the Avs got eliminated from the playoffs. <laughs> Why are you gonna bring that up, bro? I'll I will just always remember that. Like <laughs> My fun Sonny Milano fact. He got arrested with AJ Greer in 2019. Oh my god. Yes, I think they got into a fight at a bar. The yeah, and they were both drunk, so that's all I remember. I'll do this one. This is cute. Hi, Kim and Taylor, who's gonna win the heart trophy? McKinnon. It's gonna be McKinnon, baby. It's a little bit of bias. Uh, fuck Kucherov, wherever that Tampa fan is. Fuck Kucherov. Uh, it's gonna be McKinnon. And if it's I not, always, I then, always want McKinnon over Kucherov. That's just easy for me. Well, exactly. He's so much more likable. I'm sorry. Like, bleh. Kucherov is also Kucherov the just played like a dirty ass hit this last game too. Like, I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah. Well, like Kucherov laid a really dirty hit against Wilson of all players. I was like, if I'm defending Tom Wilson, it was that's Wilson. a, that yeah, is a you're big right. deal. So yeah, no Kucherov. Ugh. Gross. Ugh. Go Mac. Let's go Mac. <laughs> McKinnon for heart. There you go. You got your answer, Simon. Oh, my he, God. Here, fun fact. This happened today. He has 91 even strength points. The last time that there was a player with over 90 even strength points was Yager in 95-96. That is insane. 91 even strength points. He has 138 points. Niger is protecting his team. Wilson Chief shot at the guy. Ooh, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. Kucherov sucks. <laughs> Ooh. I'll defend Tom Wilson in this situation all day because I hate Kucherov. Oh my god. Wow. Remember that time that Kucherov like got pissed at the equipment manager when they were losing in the cup yeah. final and threw his gloves at him with like 20 yeah. seconds left to start screaming at him? Like, I remember. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Who <laughs> won? Not Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Abs. <laughs> I say that and they're gonna be out in the first round, but it's okay because I still love them. Damn, I'm dead. I'm re- I was gonna say, oh, <laughs> I remember because I was like, do you want a fun stat? Uh, Kyle Palmieri scored back to back empty net goals for the Islanders uh, in two different, like one game after the other. Yeah, uh, he is the first New York Islander to score two empty netters in a row since Mike Bossy scored his fifty and fifty. What? <laughs> That's crazy, dude. That's how long it's been since the same Islander scored two empty net goals. That's in a row. wild. I mean, what? That's yeah. nuts. I was like, I heard that on the broadcast, and I was like, "Are you shitting me?" Yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, yeah, no, it was Chris King who I heard it from, and then like they also <laughs> reported it live. But I was like, "That's just no." Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, right. Like. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. I almost said Sidney Crosby should win the heart. <laughs> I mean, dude, Penguins would be literally nowhere without him right now. Like, no, they, that's what been... I said about the Penguins and Capitals even being a conversation for this wild card. Yeah. On their coattails. Literally hanging yeah. up by their coattails. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> in Ortra, I remember, because I can't remember, I told you Islanders would get a gift from the Habs. Go, New York Islanders. Go. Wow. I mean, you did tell me. I mean, I, I I just don't trust anybody. But you did tell me that you would help us out that night. But it was a damn good game in Ortap. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Tommy. Oh, this is interesting. How many goals does Matthew finish with? Oh, dude, I want him to hit 70 so bad. I don't, though. I do. He's, He's just the I'm perfect sorry. number. I'm just, I know. He's nice. nice. <laughs> like, nice. I want him to do something so bad. Like, How many texts do you think he got that night, uh, night oh, going? Like, dude, nice. everyone <laughs> and their mother was like, nice. Nice. There was somebody in the, in the crowd that had a sign that was just nice. Really? They were like yes. waiting for it? Steve, oh Dangle, Steve Dangle tweeted it and I was like, dude, that's incredible. Nice. <laughs> oh, he's such a good, like, Matthews is just unreal when it comes to goal scoring. Like, he's going to just absolutely blow all the records out of the water. He's already almost, I think he's third in Maple Leafs 
goal scoring, which is nuts. nuts. He's just absolutely nuts. Yeah, he's crazy. I want him to hit 70. He's got two games left to do it, so let's go 71. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Defending Tom Wilson is something I never thought I'd hear Taylor. Hey, say. if it's about Kucherov, I take Tommy Wilson's side all day, man. I hate Kucherov. Oh, I hate That's him. Some extreme hate right there. Yep. There, there are only a couple players I hate that much. You got Kucherov and Bennington. Jordan wow, Bennington. Oh. Literally just came at you. Oh. Benny, we love you, Benny. You'll see you at the concert soon. Yeah, set up a hotel. Ben. Say that to my face, fool. <laughs> God, I miss you guys. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, there was something about McCarr. I missed it. Oh, okay. Kale McCarr or Quinn Hughes for Norris. I would get to... Siding with Kale, both are close Hughes. in points, but Quinn has a slight defensive advantage this season statistically. Gonna be a close call. I'd give it to Hughes. It's gonna be Noah Dobson, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Dobson, let's go. Yeah. No, I'd give it to Hughes this year. Um, Kale has, I mean, offensively, he's been fine. He's, like, got, like, 90 points or something ridiculous. Like, the guy is insane. But defensively, his game this year has not been as, as good. He's definitely having a down year. I don't foresee it being a problem going forward, but I would definitely give it to Hughes this year. Hughes has been unreal. So I have a great question for you, Taylor. You're going to be very excited about this. Oh, boy. To Taylor, since you're a Formula One connoisseur, this year is a sad year for me personally. But Why? Yeah, literally, we need more context here. I need more context here. And the Jay, the Tampa Bay Lightning fan, says, Kucherov being unlikable because he doesn't get bullied on the ice like he did until 2018 is hilarious, by the way. No, I just hate him. He's just very unlikable. <laughs> Sorry. It's... The art and oh, Senna, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, rest in peace to him. Senna That's was like... a boss, man. I just, his last name doesn't... <sighs> I think of Senna, the medication, and then all I think is, <laughs> then all I think is poopy. <laughs> I took me a bit to put together there. Yeah, like, I think uh, it's kind of caught. <laughs> well, I know Max is going to gonna win the so championship. Sorry. Like, actual respects to Senna. Yeah, Ayrton really... Senna, he's a, he was very, very talented. But the but nurse like... in me thinks of the drug Senna caught. Yeah. Which is a pill to help you go poopy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that just, that checks out. Well, Max is going to win this year. We all know it, but I am a hardcore Leclerc fan, so I want him to come kick some ass. When I moved to Brazil, oh, yeah. Chile, I tell you, I've never seen an entire mm-hmm. Leclerc tomorrow morning. He goes, low poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, low yeah. Uh, any l- last questions, Islanders, for me this week? Uh, anything for Taylor, obviously? We got someone, a connoisseur of the West and Formula One. He is both with Leclerc behind you. Yes, yes, I got it right. Okay, good job. I'm, I'm proud. <laughs> Charles, it's my boy. I know she sent me all the freaking wink memes with him. I love it. he's terrible. You sent me wink. all the Charles stuff. I sent you all the sleep token venom and stuff. Yeah, I, I, yep, yep, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Just incredible. Said I want Mac to get heart to being a Canucks fan, but with Tampa being in playoffs and Kucherov being fifty points ahead of the next closest teammate, that might be a deciding factor. Whatever, McKinnon for heart <laughs> all day, son. Also, I don't think. I mean, it's not fifty points, but the gap between like Mac and the next guy is not like that low either. So. Okay, here, Roberto Del Mar says, should the NHL and other leagues, for that matter, have all teams play simultaneously on the final day of a regular season? No. No. That loses money. What's the point of that? Number one, that would lose money instantly, and you need the airspace time. Like, where would you find all that airspace time? You don't. Um, But that would lose you so much money because they get from via views doing the games, like, you know, interchangeably during the day. There, There would be no way for them to even do that. So yeah, no, I mean, that would be that would be pointless. Yo, bro, yo, we got another salty Tampa fan in here. Who has more cups than Mac? Congratulations. Cool. He sure does. I never said he was bad. I just said I hated him. There, so also, funny. for the record, there's a 35-point gap between McKinnon and the next player, so. But 
It's so funny when you're talking about players that you hate. That was me with Bortuzzo. Oh, I hate Bertuzzo still. I'm sorry, man. Ugh, I cannot stand that guy. Like, when I saw he was on the Islanders, I was like, are you for real? Are you for real right now? That was I me cannot stand the, him. Because of the hit he laid on Nelson, and then he did it to the Leafs, like, two years later. Yeah, same, was awful. same hit. Yeah. And I sent it to Steve Dangle. He actually retweeted my video. Yeah. Not a fan. And, and, it, and now he's turned into, like, that the player on your team that, you you know, like, other people hate, but you have to yeah. love. Yeah. You loved you. You're glad he's on your team, but you yeah. know why people hate him. Yeah, yeah, and I I can understand it completely. But I'm like, now that I met him too, and I've like said hi to him. He is so nice in person, bro. I'm sorry, I can't cheer for him. I won't do it. I won't do it. <laughs> no, he's like a little string bean when you meet him in person, though. <laughs> yep. Nope. Don't like him. <laughs> don't like him. <laughs> but he's so nice in person. Well, that's good. I'm glad I just love douche. all the all the St. Louis fans coming at me, and they're like, "I didn't even recognize him without his beard." Yeah, and no, he looks weird without it. Ugh. No, he's a reformed man. <laughs> sure, okay, we'll go with that. I still want to know the full story, and I didn't get to ask it at the Q and A. There were too many kids, but damn children. <sighs> no, like literally though, I thought it would be no kid Q- like Q and A for us, but but. I wanted to ask him about Boychuk picking him up from the airport and literally like throwing shaving cream and a razor at him going, you ready? <laughs> like that's literally what he said. Oh, he just picked brutal. him up with shaving cream and a razor. Dude. <laughs> that is still the weirdest thing to me about the Islanders is the whole it's facial hair thing. Are you really shocked? Yeah, I know. That's why. I'm just like, get over it, Lou. Or this is not the 1950s. Simon, when I was younger, I actually mixed up the two a lot. Who? But, yeah. Bortuzzo and Bertuzzi. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. When I was younger, I mixed them up a lot. But now, mm. nowadays, it's like nothing. I mean, I hate them equally, so, like, they're basically the same player to me. I'm not, is there? I mean, I hate um player that I hate on the Habs, um, Matheson, Mike Matheson. Yeah, Matheson. Because mm-hmm. he ended Boychuk's career. I will never forgive him for that. It was when he was on the Panthers. Um, I can't stand him because of that. That's the only reason I hate him. I don't know. Yeah, Bennington will always be at the top of my shit list, man. Like, yep. Oh, Bennington? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Absolutely oh, the top yeah. of my shit list. Mm, same. And, like, people came at me because I defended him about something the other day. Like, honestly, because I don't think he did anything wrong. And I'm going to be there to say, like, listen, I don't I don't see what's wrong with this. But, yeah, no, there's some things where I'm like, come on, Bennington. Like, the, the water bottle. Oh, the water bottle? Literally still one of my favorite moments of that cup run was the water bottle. Ugh. I love everyone knowing like the signs of like the water bottles and shit. Dude, oh somebody made a, a Stanley Cup out of water bottles and brought it to the first game against the Blues the next season. That's pretty funny. That's honestly which funny. they continued they proceeded to lose because we were so incredibly injured and it was brutal. But it was still really funny. Diamond says he hates Marchand. Uh, yeah, my like my mother's either. most hated player in the NHL is Brad Marchand. Actually, I'm pretty sure that's my mom's most hated player, too. Really? Our moms oh, yeah, agree? Dude. She cannot stand him. She's like, rap boy. I yeah, hate no, him. My, my mom despises everything about Brad Marchand. Yep. I love how our moms agree about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my mom hates him. She just can't stand him. There's, my, I feel like my mom has a lot of players she doesn't like now, though. Liked players around the league? Obviously, Tyson Berry because of you. Mm-hmm. I love Tyson Berry. I'm a Drew Doughty fan. I love Doughty's Drew Doughty. Dope. Uh, Brandon, Brandon Tedev. No, I know. Chris, Chris Tanev is the one I hate. No more. Just kidding. No, I was about wrong to say. Tanev. I was like, what is wrong with Brandon? Chris Tanev is the one I hate. He's on the crack. Yeah, yeah like Chris is on the Kraken, right? No, like no. Brother. Which one's on the Kraken? Like the brother. Which Tanev is on the Kraken? The Kraken? No, that's Brandon. Oh, yeah, no, I hate him. Ew. Uh, Dude, he ruined himself after that. Oh, series you know what? I year. remember posting in our group chat, and you were like, "Ew!" And you're like, "Ew, ew." Although his like ghost picture, or whatever, like his like that picture, still I my know. favorite. But I, I ew, no, he barf. He like ruined himself for me in that series last year. 
Yeah, not Chris. Yeah, duh, Brent. Yeah, I was like, yeah, no. no, Chris is not on the Seattle Kraken. That's Brendan. Chris was, uh, he was on the, was, he was in the Flames. Yeah, he he just got traded. Did he get traded? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Hold I don't on. remember. Chris Tanov. Dude, it's all run together now at this point. I'm like, who's been, who's where? Yeah, he's on the Dallas Stars now. Oh, that's right. I forgot that Noah Hannafin got traded and he's on Vegas now. Yeah. Let's not talk about that. Dude, Vegas. Mm. And he signed with them. I hate that team so much. So much. They're yeah, up there with like just, Tampa and Boston. Like, hey, Chris. <laughs> Oh. Well, okay. Just curiosity. What what was your favorite? What's your favorite NHL brother duo? Hmm. I mean, I kind of like the Kachucks. I hate. I, separately, I'm like, Ugh. but like them together, I, they just make me laugh. <laughs> no. My hey. favorite ever brother duo, and like the Islanders had, but. Uh, the Sedins. Oh, yeah, the Sedins were great, but I don't know. I have, there's something about like a Chuck. I was a big Sedins fan. Yeah, they were pretty dope. I love those brothers. Yeah, so I um, shout out to the Canucks fans there. But... Hey, someday we're going to have the McCars. Can't wait. Probably not, but like it's fine. Taylor McCarr, let's go. Oh, my God. He just transferred to a different school. He's not paying for um. I'll tell mess. anyone who says the Hughes in here. Like, I'll be like, no. No. <laughs> no. They're so talented, but they're so annoying. Like their fan base is annoying. Yeah, exactly. That's what makes them annoying, honestly. Like, like ugh. the Puck Bunny fan base is no. Yeah, they've got some like serious, crazy fans. Yo, that one girl who like pretended to be his girlfriend. Yes, right? Like, who does that? Like, honestly, that honestly. was nuts. You're gonna do that with a an athlete? Yes, I did that friend into like sh- actually believing it too. Yeah. It was That's wild. nuts. That was wild. Like she apparently, like she photoshopped herself and like yeah, his I mean, photo. There's a TikTok series about it. It was so. Oh it was just girlfriend or roommate or something. Yeah. No. And then that video came out with his actual girlfriend, and they were like, "Yeah, That's fucking nuts." Yeah, dude. No, the Jack Hughes has some of the weirdest fans. Like they're kind of scary. I, I remember when he was hurt and someone had a Jack Hughes son or something and they were like, <laughs> and they put the, the SpongeBob with the Mr. Krabs like, who's going to tell him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks, man. Oh, man, that was so funny. But yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up there. We've been going an hour and 40. We almost going two hours. I actually go an hour, Taylor. We've been going an hour and 40. <laughs> Yeah, you put us two together. We can talk for hours. We can talk for hockey forever, which is yeah. why I love the fuck out of you. <laughs> and why I wanted to do this with you because I know you, obviously you know your shit. And yeah. you always have fun talking. I try. Even if we disagree. Exactly. Just want to put that out there. Exactly. Um. <laughs> because negativity <laughs> is a part of sports, everybody. You can not be roses all the time. Things. And it's, you know, it's fun and entertaining and it's exactly. like a part of what podcasting is about everybody in this is like <laughs> part of chat like, excuse me about, we're like don't worry about it Just don't worry about it don't worry about it don't worry, about it. Don't worry what we're... that's just a snide comment towards certain people it's fine yeah stuck it laying that there okay <laughs> so um but guys oh my god so, like I thought it was like Kim and Taylor you two are sisters I swear to God, we are, she is this my is, sister. Kim is my kindred spirit. That's what I call Kim. She's my she is my long lost sister. I swear to God, I, I we met during COVID. Yep, because of Addie. Because of Addie, shout out to Addie. Uh, mm-hmm. for, for people, you know, we should just say we met during COVID. Um, I I was in a very low period of my life, um, just like with personally, um. And we like, both were, we both were, mm-hmm. and we both, but we clicked instantly because we both had players that were so meaningful to our lives, mm-hmm. and so we knew how much that player meant for us because we went through situations that were tough, and these players helped us through them, and we really bonded that way. 
Yeah. Um, and you know, from there we just started talking, and the I mean, rest is history. The rest is got there. Even like uh, when I'm talking to her, my mom goes, "You guys sound like sisters." <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like it's scary a little bit. Like it's so fun though. And and that's what I love about her. We we actually actually is my sister, but. Thank you, Addie, for introducing us. Exactly. Addie will always be the one that brought us together. <laughs> and, yo, Empire says, great show, girls. Hit the thumbs up. Yes, please do. Share. Love. <laughs> Give us the thumbs up because, oh, man, it's just, it's too easy doing this with you. It's too easy talking hockey with you and just being happy and... Uh, <laughs> And then I'm gonna be in her wedding, and it's gonna be dope. Oh my god, oh, that's gonna be so much fun! And I know you're just you're gonna live it up with me. So, oh yeah, it'll be fun. I actually want to see this. Sorry, I bet post to post in twenty. You met Neil? Yo, he's an awesome guy. I want to meet him in Toronto because we're Canadians. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, so post to post, I met him when I was still in college. He like actually helped uh, support me and actually showed me a band that I love to this day. Uh, he does. He he knows hockey jerseys inside out. You want someone with hockey knowledge, like hockey jersey knowledge, out the butt. I yeah, post to post. Mm-hmm. Like if I have any questions or opinions, like I'll ask him because he knows his shit. Yeah. I will love watching his jersey videos. So when they, like he has opinions on jerseys, I listen. Especially when the new ones coming out by Fanatics. Oh, I'm gonna be plastered to his channel. Uh, <laughs> That's gonna. We should do a fun reaction video to this. For real, there's so many already. We're gonna have fun. <laughs> Something like that. Oh God. K and T show. Someone said. <laughs> Benny Boy says, "Ugh, fanatics." <laughs> hey, <Ben. laughs> But good night, guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for tuning in and chilling with me and my best friend. Oh my god, over here, <laughs> over here. I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> over here, Taylor Worlton. She's the best thing ever, as Thanks you guys for know. Me on, man, it was a lot of fun. So, I want to put this in. I always end every podcast like this, Taylor. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to spam the chat with your favorite team. Let's go Islanders. Let's go Avalanche. Let's go Predators. Let's go Washington. Let Whatever your team favorite team is, put it in the chat because your team would not be who they are without your love, dedication, and passion for them. And so be proud about who you are as a fan. Never, you know, just, let, you know, keep it inside because you're afraid of what other people might think of what you're, who you love. Be passionate about your team. Put in the chat. Be loud. I'm going to end it. Let's go, Islanders. And Taylor. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And we'll see you next Sunday, hopefully, to talk about Islanders playoffs. Bye. Bye. <laughs>